hey when will i be youtube famous i don't know probably never what i do know is that this is 4f beauty and if i have remembered you are watching me in black and white right now because i have got this palette on one eye and this palette on the other eye my throat apparently decided to grumble at me at that particular moment in time but uh, I don't want you working out yet which palette is on which eye so the question is do I like these palettes? do I recommend these palettes? how well or otherwise did they perform? these and many more questions are answered in the forthcoming film so as I have said for some considerable time now grab a drink grab a snack put your feet up and enjoy because here it comes. Hey, welcome back from the intro. Okay, I will have shown you these in the intro. I've had them a little while. Still haven't got around to trying them. This is the I Heart Revolution Heartbreakers in shade Lucky, which is obviously their version of... Um, the Colourpop 9 pan monochromatic palettes so cheap simple packaging heart shaped quite a nice variety of shades there one two three four mattes three satins two shimmers so not bad and then this is their mint choc chip donut palette which is squidgy sadly doesn't smell like mint choc chip maybe I should spray it with my Gerard setting spray so it smells like it uh, and this looks this is obviously this is slightly more expensive it's got much much more expensive packaging it's got a mirror but it only has the five shades uh, and none of those are matte they're all satins so I thought I would use one on one eye and one on the other eye just to see how they perform mm. um, I know a lot of people are probably going to be put off by the fact that this doesn't have any mattes in it so we'll see how that performs I'll use this one I think on this eye because this is the eye that I'm blind in so I get more fallout this side so we'll be able to see whether the satin formula is going to give us a lot more fallout that's the eye to test that one I think which obviously by default means that I'll be using this one on this eye um, I don't know if I'm going to do one eye at a time or do them both together I haven't decided yet we'll see what happens how I feel when I start filming but this is still a teaching channel um, my chronic pain doesn't let me go very quickly if you saw my previous film you know what chronic pain feels like if it were bruises or if it had an external um, viewable symptoms um, that was a very difficult film to make emotionally it knocked me quite hard when I was editing it and, and realised that yeah you know what this is how I feel this is how just my fibro leaves me um, without you know the osteoarthritis through my spine 
um, sciatica, alognia, peripheral neuropathy, depression, anxiety, panic attacks, social anxiety. I'm a bit of a mess, folks, let's put it that way. Uh, but makeup helps me pull that together and at least present a face that looks like it's capable. So, I still go at a speed that beginners can keep up with. If that's too slow for you, there is a speed widget up there. Please feel free to use it. I've discussed from very early on the differences between deep set eyes and hooded lids. They have similar issues when it comes to performance of eyeshadows, but they are two very different eyes and they have very different workarounds. So I'm about to insert a clip uh, in just a moment. It'll be very up close and personal. If you've not seen them before, I come in really tight to the eyes um, and I'll, I'll talk you through how to work out which eye shape you have and the workaround for it. And once I've done that, I'll be back to play with these. Each clip. Now, um, my eyes have this primer on it. This is the Crown Pebble Primer in blank page cotton. I do have a discount code for this. It is not affiliated. I don't earn money from it. But if you use my code, you save, I think it's 15%. And I earn pebbles that I can offset against future purchases from them. The reason I love the Chrome Pebble Primer is because it's it goes on like a cream, but it has a powdery finish. So unlike when you use a concealer or like a MAC Paint Pot for example, you have the trade-off between do I set it so I can blend easily or do I leave it tacky so that I get the full impact of colour. You don't have that trade-off with this, you can blend on it instantly and you don't lose any of the colour. Now she does six different shades of this at the moment. White is the lightest, the deepest two are a chocolate brown and a black. Then there are three different skin tone shades as well, so you should be able to find one that will work for you. Um, I apply this with a flat brush, just a very light layer, and then I buff it over mm. with a fluffy blending brush to take any excess off and to make sure I've got a nice even layer across the eye. Now, I've got deep set eyes, so I get the same issues that people with hooded lids get. I get transference of colour onto the upper lid. If I'm cutting my crease, I have to cut onto the upper lid, not just through the socket. And if I'm using glitter, even with glitter glue, I get a bare patch in the middle. Because people with hooded lids get the same symptoms as people with deep set eyes. I see a lot of people with deep set eyes thinking they have hooded lids when they don't. So they follow the guidelines for hooded lids and wonder why their eyes still don't look right. So, I'm going to explain very easily for you how to tell the difference and what the two workarounds are. With my brows relaxed and looking straight forward, you can see all of my mobile lid from inner to outer corner. You can't see a lot of it, but you can see it. So I haven't got hooded lids. It's only if this upper lid comes down and completely covers part or all of the mobile lid that you have a full or a half hooded lid or what's known as a mono or an Asian eye. I'm going to demonstrate on this eye deep set eyes because this is the eye that I'm blind in so I'll stay on screen and in focus. If I cover a visible mobile lid and close my eye you can see I've got as much if not more lid that tucks back away out of sight and if I do the same on the top lid the static lid you can see I've got about the same amount of lid again that tucks back away out of sight when the eyes open and it's those two bits of lid rubbing together that give me 
same issues that hooded lids get. So, what are the workarounds? If you have hooded lids, get a brush, something like this, or a pencil brush. Sketch out on your static lid where you want your new crease to fall. Now obviously that's going to reduce the space between the crease and the brow. So just use smaller blending brushes, or if necessary, take the colour right up to the brow, instead of leaving a gap. If you have deep set eyes like myself, all we need to do when we're putting the colour through the crease, which nine times out of ten will be the deepest colour that we're using, just sit back, relax your brows and make sure you've brought it up high enough that you can see it when your eyes are open. So, two very different workarounds for two very different types of lids, but that have very similar issues. Hey, and I am back. Right. Starting off with the Heartbreakers palette. These don't have names, they just have numbers from 1 to 9. Um, it doesn't necessarily say that some are pigments, but there are different ingredients depending on the formulas. So, I'm going in with one of the AliExpress brushes that I recommend in my Which Brushes Do I Recommend film. And I'm going to start off with Blending Brush 7, which is a loosely packed brush. Um, it is clean, it's just a little bit stained. And I'm going to start off by going into this shade, bottom corner here. Very, very pale mint. Not expecting this to show up very well, even with my nice white eye primer. Quite a bit of kick up in pan. That's not an issue for me though, because at least it means it's getting it onto the brush. Um, I do my base afterwards anyway, and you can always go back and pick the kick up up when you need to add more shades. So, I'm holding the brush right at the very end here. I've just got to show you, look, look, these are my Tiger King nails. How cute are they? bought them off of, they're not salon, they're stick-ons, but um, one of the salons about, I don't know, three quarters of an hour drive from where I live, was selling them, so I'm like, oh hell yeah, she posted it through, so that was great, so I'm doing circular movements, as you can see, now I'm doing this direction going towards the nose, bit of a bounce and then reversing the direction coming back out again. Now the reason I'm doing that is because literally in two days time I'll be 46. I've also lost over 14 stone, that's over 200 pounds. So the skin on my eyelids moves. And by doing this circular movement, we're very gently moving the eye in this direction and then this direction so that we don't get any <laughs> tiger striping or barcoding. And as I thought, this is a very, very pale shade and it's going to take a fair amount of building up to show up. Um, you're going to need a light base with this. It's OK. Clean that off on a microfiber cloth because I've given up using um, colour switches, fibro fog colour switches uh, because they're just too rough on your brushes, especially natural hair brushes. I mean these are synthetic, um, but I much prefer using either a microfiber cloth or a washcloth or flannel or uh, an old tea towel or even a bit of kitchen paper, anything other, than, those are just too rough, they really are. Right, now I'm going to go in to 
Well, in terms of mats, I've only got these three now down the middle, which are all quite dark. So I might go into this satin here. Maybe this one up here. I might go into this one. And, um, no, I will go into this bottom corner here and just see if this will add a little bit more oomphy. Again, a lot of kick up. So, start this a little bit further down. Did I have any pigment on the brush? Hello pigment. Oh, there we go. Some satins are really, really good when you use them as a mat. The um, as you blend the the sort of satiny, shimmery element buffs away, leaving you with the base colour. This is doing that. It's just taking. A little bit longer than I was expecting. But as you can see, it is building the colour up. How's your day been? Has it been a good one? Are you still locked down where you are, or are you allowed a little bit more freedom now? I see New Zealand have gone from category 4 to category 3, they're allowing them a little bit more freedom now, which is good. Um, I've got family that, that live in New Zealand, so... Right, going in with brush number 9, which is a little bit more tapered. And I'm going to go in with this matte green in the middle there. Again, a lot of kick up. Let's just run this through what for me is my natural crease. If you've had to move your crease, now's the time to follow the line that you put down. And as you can see, I did circular movements on the outer edge where I want it built up to about the middle and then tiny circular movements and then a little bit of windscreen wiper just on the inner corner here. But then again, reversing the direction to buff back out. Now, one of the issues that I have is I've always had quite watery eyes. I've never been able to put anything in my waterline and have it stay there for long. Um, fibro makes that worse and hay fever makes that worse. And... Uh, yeah, it's it's most definitely hay fever season here at the moment. That green's actually blended on quite nicely. There's a little bit of patching just there, but I tend to get that here anyway, and I'm about to go over it with a darker shade anyway, so I'm not overly worried by that. And I'm going in with, this is a pencil brush, but it's a little bit bigger than a normal pencil brush. That's a normal pencil brush. This is the size I'm going in with. And I'm going to go into the brown mat just here. I'm going to pop this on the outer third. of the mobile lid, like so, and then just circular movements to about halfway along. I don't want to take it all the way along because I don't want to lose that green that I've got on the inner corner. That's actually quite pretty. Clean the brush off. And 
And then I'm going to grab a Morphe M321 brush. Let me grab a spray. That one will do. This is just my iHeart Revolution spray in cucumber. That I'm going to be using to wet the brush after I've applied the pigment. You never go into a pressed pigment with a wet brush guaranteed that's the way to kill it. So I'm going to go into this light shimmer here. Oh yeah okay that's that's very very soft very fully a party. I don't know if you can see the texture that that's I've barely touched it and that shows you the sort of texture on the brush. So we just wet that. Now I like to dry this ferrule off. Easy way to do that, pop it into your knuckles and spin because otherwise the moisture goes down here and you don't end up with a brush. You end up with a stick. Let's pop this. onto the rest of the mobile lid. That's a really pretty colour. Really pretty. And that's gone on very nicely as well. Right, I'm just going to use the tip of the bristles to just buff where it meets that brown on the outer edge just to soften the line between the two I think that looks really pretty right okay now let's do this eye with Now, as I said, there's fewer options here and all of them are satin. You can see I have, you can see where I've swatched them or you can see my fingerprint in all of them. So I'm going to start off, I think, with this shade here. And again, I'm going to start off with the biggest of the fluffier brushes. These are looking like they're going to hard pan. You can see how that's starting to glisten already, but it is still picking up pigment, so let's see. Now, as I said, I don't mind doing all shimmer looks, but I know a lot of people are not keen on it. But this would be, if you're dipping your toe into colour and you've got a lot of neutral palettes this could be a good one to add to it to use for pop of colour on the lid or lower lash line or just you know just to dip your toe into a little bit of colour but as you can see the more you buff this the less shimmery it appears a lot of how um, uh, a shadow lays down are the brushes that you use and if you're using a blending brush rather than a packing brush you do tend to almost swipe away a lot of the shimmer. You don't get rid of all of it but you do swipe away a lot of it. Right, clean the brush and I think now I think I'll go into this olivey. No, actually, I might save that. I think I'll go into this one here. The deeper khaki olive rather than the bright green Mediterranean olive, which is the sort of thing you have stuffed with garlic and pimento and. Ooh. 
Anybody else fancy garlic olives now? I wouldn't mind, but it's like half seven in the morning and I'm now fancying garlic olives and we haven't got any. Well, mind you, I have been up since half four or so. Hubby's on permanent earlies at the moment. He's, um, he's a forklift driver for a hardware store and they're classed as essential businesses because obviously people still need to mend broken toilets and things. So up until recently they've been doing click and collect orders only so they've not been allowing customers in store but they're now talking about potentially allowing customers in store and I don't like that idea at all because at the moment the only sort of contact he's actually having with people is lorry drivers um, and then he's normally up on the forklift anyway so I don't like the idea of the general public being back in there again. It means I'm going to be worrying about him all the time. Right, I'm going to go in with this deep green with the smaller brush. And let's just see how this. I'll use this on the outer corner, I think. Because obviously there are fewer options this side. Again, blend the outer corner and then kind of windscreen wipe with this end of it. Now this eye, I often find that my usual routine will still leave me with the tiger striping because I've got such deep creasing there. But with a shimmer shade you don't actually notice as much as you do with a matte. Um, but when it's time to put the colour on the lid I do have to stretch this lid out otherwise the pigment builds up in the crease loosely and then starts cascading down my face as it dries during the day and gets into my eye and it can actually be really painful. Okay. Not as much fallout as I was expecting, I will admit. Back in with this Morphe 321. I think I'm going to go into that bright olive because that is really calling my name. Say my name, say my name. <laughs> That's just spread all across on my shoulder. Right. Wow, look at that. This is very reminiscent of the centre shade in the Colourpop Just My Luck palette. That gorgeous greeny gold that they've got. This is very, very reminiscent of that. Which obviously the other palette doesn't have. It, well, the other palette that I've tried today anyway. Again, just buff those edges together. Obviously two very different eye looks because it's two different palettes, but I think you can see there that you can actually get a good look from them. Obviously you're more restricted with this one because you've only got satins and you've only got five shades. So I'm going to pause you just now while I pop some foundation on etc 
and I'll be back to finish this eye look off with you so I'm going to have to wait for the next time I press record to talk to you but you my darlings will see me absolutely instantly hello I am back okay dokely I am going to, don't know where that came from I'm going to use this brush today to do my under eye and I'm going to go in with I think this green here which coincidentally is exactly the same green as the tip of the brush I'm just going to smudge this along the lower lash line And then I get the smaller of the blender brushes and go into the yellow. Then use that to soften it. I like that. And now for the other side. I will go for my M321. And I think I'll go into the deepest of the greens. Run that along and then get the blender brush again and go into the lightest one that I hadn't used yet. Use that just to soften it up. Quite like that. Quite like that a lot. Now I have got a new highlighter to try. The Pixie X Rachel Loves palette. This is one that I have seen Paige from Seeking Alexandria use and rave about for so long. And I finally managed to pick one up. So, this is just a cheap little lip brush that I bought yonks ago. And I go into lace and use that on my inner corner. Pretty. And then, do you know what, I think I'm going to go into Zipper, which is the Lilac. Just to go under the tail of my brow. Yeah, that's not showing up enough. Let's go into Clutch. you for one last time while I go and put some mascara on, chuck some more of this highlight on my face, put a lippy on, do something with the hair, back with my final thoughts. I am back. Hair is... well it's done whatever it wants to again as usual really. 
use the Rage Pixie highlight again. Mascara is the It Superhero Mascara Mini that I've got. And Lippy is the Mini Bite in Honeycomb that I've also got. So, what are my final thoughts on these? This one, I really like. The mattes blended out without any problem at all. Shimmer went on really nicely. Good range of colours. Definitely, definitely recommend this. Um, it's different enough from the colours in Just My Luck, if you've got the Colourpop one, that this will give you some alternatives. Um, or if you're in the UK and don't want to pay the 10 bucks shipping plus tax and etc on arrival, then this could be a good alternative for you. The donut. It's pretty. It's travel friendly. It's all shimmer. And not the easiest of shimmers to work with. Um, they're tending to go a bit hard pan. They took some work to build up. Um, not as impressed. It'll be as I said when I was using it. If you're just dipping your toes into colour and want something to try greens with, to use as a pop of colour on the lid or a pop of colour on your lower lash line, then this would be a good route to go. Because being shimmers, it gives you five different greens that you could use on your mobile lid as a pop of colour. But really, even though I don't mind doing an all shimmer look, this to me feels like an accompanying palette. It doesn't feel like a standalone palette. I think even if there'd just been one matte in here to ground the palette, then I think maybe maybe I'd have a different opinion. But to me this just it's the kind of thing you would it's the kind of thing I'd give to my god kids who are just beginning to get into makeup and beginning to get into colours and are wearing more neutral looks but perhaps with a little pop of colour on the lid to find out what colours suit them. This is probably going to end up going to my god kids to be quite honest. Um, I don't see myself using it again because the only the only colour in it that really really grabbed me is the colour that I used on the lid which I've got in the Colourpop palette anyway so uh, yes I'd definitely buy this this not so much so I hope you found that helpful if you're one of my 4F babies, please double check you're still subscribed. YouTube are still unsubscribing people. Every time I put a film up, I'm losing subs, but then that seems to be happening to all of us at the moment. Um, even if I'm still appearing in your news feed, it is worth double checking that you are still subscribed. Once you've done that, it'd be awesome if you would hit the like button and maybe even leave me a comment. It does help with the algorithm and pushing this film out for people that perhaps haven't had the fun of 4F Beauty yet. If you're new here, hi, hello, welcome, I hope you've enjoyed it. If you've made it this far through, I'm guessing there was something that you liked. Uh, it would be awesome if you too would like to join the 4F family, the nicest family on YouTube. It's very simple to do, you hit the subscribe button, turn it from red to grey and then you ring the notification bell and you say yes however many times YouTube are currently asking you to say yes 
and with a bit of luck they'll tell you, I don't know, one in every four of my films that I put up. Speaking of which, I have got an awful lot of other films you can watch. Uh, so, as I have said for some time, pick a playlist, grab a drink, grab a snack, put your feet up, and indulge. Right, my darlings, as ever, all that remains for me to say is you all stay fabulous and I will see you next time. Bye for now.